Hi, everyone. I know there's a few of you on here already. Don't forget to say hi so that I know you're there. We'll just give folks a couple of minutes to join in and uh, we'll start then. For those of you who haven't seen me before, I usually don't come in front of the camera too often. My name's Trisha and I'm, I'm the face behind the aspiring home cook. Hi, Lisa. In the meanwhile, while we wait for people to lo log in and join in on the video, if you've got any questions about any of the recipes that I've shared on my channel, go ahead and leave that as a comment here as well. I've got a few that viewers have already submitted on the community tab. Also, for those of you who are already here, if you can hear me, just let me know. I've I've tested this live before, but I'm not very sure. Anyone there? Hi, Savio. Nice of you to join us. Oh, fantastic. That's good to know that I can be heard. Hey, Ashley. So what's everyone doing this Saturday morning? I know there's a little bit of a time lag between the video and the audio, so I hope it's not too much. You're getting ready to plan. I'm assuming that's for Christmas or is that for checking? Has anyone started making Christmas sweets yet or is it still too early? Well, over here, it's been a horrific summer. You've probably heard of the bushfires that have been raging for a while now. They, a lot of them are under control, but they're still burning all through the state. The weather isn't too bad right now, but yes, we're headed for summer and making Christmas sweets in the middle of summer is a challenge in itself. So I hope you're having better luck than we are, at least with the weather. Okay, I think I'm going to start off with the questions now. And as people join in, if there's anything that I've missed out on, or if there's any more information that you'd like me to share with you, you can just leave it as a comment over here. I've got my notes. So if you see me looking down, that's what I'm checking on your questions from the past couple of community posts. Uh, one that I get asked very often is how do you plan your whole Christmas sweet making endeavor? It can be very challenging, especially with weather like ours. The first and most important thing is the shelf life of the sweets that you're making. I would strongly recommend that most sweets that 
either include coconut or some form of dairy, those are the ones that you should leave to the last. Those are the ones that tend to have the shortest shelf life. Now, the way we've always done it is we'd start off with the ones or the sweets basically that have longer shelf lives. So if you're making a boozy rum cake, that would be first on your list because those cakes are best left to mature for a couple of days. Next on my list personally would be something like a perad. Perad has an immensely long shelf life. As an experiment, I've even had it in the fridge for us because we're in the middle of summer. I've had it in the fridge for about six months and absolutely nothing happens to it provided it is stored in a nice airtight container and you don't it doesn't come into contact with moisture you're good to go that i would typically follow with things like kalkals now kalkals also have a very very long shelf life again storage conditions are extremely important things that i would leave to the very end as far as possible would be sweets like your coconut toffee even nuris, especially if your nuris have got a coconut filling. I tend to use desiccated coconut for my nuris, and I'm hoping I can share that recipe with you really soon in the run-up to Christmas in the next couple of weeks. But even though I use desiccated coconut, I leave that towards the end so that I can enjoy a slightly longer shelf life. Sweets like milk cream come in dead last. So does mazapan. And uh, yeah, I think that's about it. Date rolls and other cookies have long shelf lives. You can make them in advance. Chocolate fudges also stay really well refrigerated. So again, that's something that you can plan accordingly. Now, as far as storage, like I have mentioned in some of my previous videos, make sure that it's in a nice airtight container. And anytime you get into that container, make sure your hands are completely dry or the utensil that you're using, if you're using a spoon or whatever you're using to access those sweets, that's got to be completely dry as well. And your sweets should enjoy a nice long shelf life. The next extremely common question, and I think I've answered this one more than a dozen times in a lot of my videos, is one about the pan that I use. If you've seen most of my Christmas sweet videos, the ones that require a longer time to cook, I use this nice wide stainless steel pan. Now that is a KitchenAid pan. What I will do is once this video is done, I will leave a link to a similar pan down in the description box. That pan is one that I had bought, I'd say in 2013. Yep, end of year 2013, and I've had it since. I've done a little looking in the recent few months every time someone asks me about it. Unfortunately, that particular design is not available. I don't think KitchenAid's making that particular design anymore. However, there is one that's really similar. It's just that it doesn't have the two short handles on either side. It's got one long handle like a typical frying pan. That being said, I've got a few other stainless steel utensils from KitchenAid and they're all fantastic quality. Now, do you need a KitchenAid pan? You most definitely not. Don't. It is good quality and I, I swear by it. But as long as you have a good heavy stainless steel pan, you're good to go. The reason I choose to use a wider pan, as wide a pan as will fit on my cooktop, is because that drastically brings down your cooking time. And with sweets like perad, milk cream, mazapan, these are infamous for taking ages and folks having to stand and stir for hours together. But if you've seen in my video, a lot of videos, a lot of uh, them include the time that it's taken me to cook. And I usually, I think the longest it has taken me is about 45 minutes to 50 minutes in a pan that size. So it did. It, it brings down, I can't tell you how much time that time and effort of having a white pan um, saves you. Back when we went to Mumbai last, there was a, uh, I, I believe there's a company called Meyer, M-E-Y-E-R. I know that they make stainless steel pans because I picked up one for my brother's um, housewarming party. I haven't personally used it, but they seem like they were great quality. So if you're hard pressed, maybe check out something like that. Even if you get one that's somewhat shaped like a wok, you should be good. Anything that has a wider surface area. So that's about the pan. 
While we're talking about the pan, lots of folks want to know why I don't use nonstick pans. I do use nonstick pans in my cooking. I have for a while. That being said, there's been a lot of studies and a lot of research done about how nonstick's not very good for you. So I'm trying to slowly get out of using nonstick pans and I'm replacing them one by one. Apart from the health benefits, the way I see it is a lot of our sweets, especially our Goan sweets like Perad and all of that, you need to, one, um, let's see, one way to tell when they're done is when they start leaving the sides of the pan. Now, when you're using a nonstick pan, I think personally that your sweets will leave the side of the pan very easily. So there is a chance that you may take your sweets off the heat thinking it's ready a lot before than you actually should. Now, therein lies the problem. You could end up, you could, I'm not saying that you will, but you could end up with a milk cream, a mazapan, a perad that is underdone and an absolute hot mess. And then you have trouble um, forming them into shapes and things like that. So personally, if you can help it, I would stay away from uh, nonstick pans, especially for sweets. But of course, it's your call. If you're comfortable using a nonstick pan or that's all you have access to, there's always ways to work around that. That leads me on to my next question. Um, one of my lovely viewers wanted to know, how do you tell when sweets are ready? In fact, there were a couple of you that said that sometimes or a lot of the times your milk cream and mazban, um, it's too sticky to handle or either rock hard. How do you know when it's done? Now, these sweets are finicky. There's no, I, I can't sit in front of you and tell you it's going to take you 30 minutes or 32 minutes or 33 minutes to completely cook. A lot of it depends on a number of factors. One, the pan you're using, the size of the batch you're making, as well as the level of heat that you're using to cook the sweet. Now, every stovetop differs, trust me. We've been renting the last few years, so every time we move house, I literally have to keep my fingers crossed and look at that flame or look at my the heat level under the pan just to make sure that I'm not overdoing it or underdoing it. That being said, in all of those videos, I have uh, mentioned that what I use is the cold water test. That's something my I've learned from my grandmother right from back in the day. She did it. My mom does it. I do it till date. And I find that that is one of the best ways to know how and when your sweet is ready. Get yourself a bowl of really cold water. Drop a little bit of your mazapan, your perad, your milk cream in there. And let it sit for a few seconds. Just make sure that you're stirring the sweet all the time while you're waiting for it to cool. You don't want the sweet that's on the gas to burn. Now, when it's had a few seconds to cool in that cold water, form a, try forming a little ball between your fingers. And that typically tells you how soft it's going to be once it has completely cooled down. Is it too tacky? Do you need to continue cooking it? I find that I personally do that test at least a couple of times so that I haven't taken it off the gas either too early or left it for too long. Okay, I see a few more people have joined us, but I hope that answers your question about when to know when sweets like this are done. Savio, go in co coconut cordial. I've shared a recipe for coconut toffee on the website. I haven't yet done a video on that because like, you know, again, I said, being in the middle of summer, I try and keep the coconutty sweets to a minimum just so that we can enjoy longer shelf life of the other sweets. But I'm going to do my best to try and include that as well. Okay, so I hope that answers your questions about the pan use, the level of heat used, as well as when to know if your sweet is ready. If there's anything that I've missed out on, go ahead and comment, let me know. Okay, while we're talking about how to know when sweets are done, I have a few questions um, about the molds that I use, the molds used for mazapan and milk cream. Now, how do you maintain this and how do you clean this? There's the easy way and the hard way. 
The easiest way to get that done is soak it in a little water at room temperature is fine. Or even if it's slightly tepid, a little warm, that's perfectly fine as well. Just let it soak in there for a little while so that all that sweet that's in all those little nooks and crannies of that mold, that has a chance to dissolve. And then just a light run through with fresh water or even soapy water first and then followed by fresh water should take care of all of your molds. I've had molds that I've had for more than 10 years um, and they still perform as brilliantly as they did back when I first got them. I'd say about 10 years ago, what you used to get very commonly were the rubber molds. You now get the silicone version, and I find that those are a little easier to work with. So if you're in the market for those molds, try and look for the slightly more silicone version compared to the rubber version, though both of them will work brilliantly. The rubber one just sometimes, depending on the quality, tends to get a little hard when it's kept for longer periods. So I hope that answers your questions about um, how to clean those molds. Okay, I'll just give me one quick second and I'll be back. Okay, I'm just going to go and take a quick look through the comments just to see if I've missed anything so far. Hi, Shivani. Hi, Renzi. Yes, I will leave a link to that pan in the description box below. Again, depending on where you are located, it may or may not be accessible, but you'll at least know what to look for. While we're still on the topic of molds, another one of a uh, couple of you wanted to know whether I grease the molds that's, that are used. I know that some people do, but I personally have never done it. If your mazepan or milk cream, basically because those are the two that are usually molded, if it's done to just the right level of if you've lost the right amount of moisture and it's done till it's just right, like you've seen in those videos, when you turn the mold over and just tap on it with a little wooden spoon, they just pop right out. I have personally, I have never to this day uh, greased any of those molds. All of my cake tins, I will definitely grease, but not my mazepan and my milk cream molds. While we're here on this topic, milk cream. Lots of you want to know how to get your milk cream white. Now, I think that I managed to get a fairly light color on the milk cream. And if you watch the video right through the, uh, the video, I, um, I mention all these little tips and tricks that actually help you maintain a good color on that milk cream. One, don't make it in very large quantities. I personally think that if you just limit it to like a couple of uh, the size, the batch size that I mentioned in the recipe, it tends to cook off faster. So you're not cooking it for longer and it doesn't have a chance to brown too much. If you double the batch and you triple the batch, you can. You'll still end up with a milk cream, but you'll probably end up with one that's a little darker. Another tip to get your milk cream as light as you possibly can are your cashew nuts. If you're using cashew seeds, cashew nuts, just make sure that they are not too dark in color. I use the raw, not the roasted version, not the roasted and salted version. You get the raw, the natural ones. And the fresher those nuts are, the brighter the coloring on them. And that ultimately also impacts your the color of your milk cream. So if you're really particular about that coloring, those are a few things that you need to keep in mind. Okay, I think we've said enough about milk cream and mazepan. I have another question. In fact, a few of you wanted to know about your coconut cream. I tend to use coconut cream, coconut milk in a lot of uh, my videos, whether they're savory or sweet. Truth be told, if I had an option, I would use fresh coconut 
100%. But the ones that we get here, I'm not really very happy with them. A lot of times, when they even when they bought fresh from the store, they turn out to be a dud. So I just stick with these little cans. If you don't have access to the cans or you've got a brilliant supply of fresh coconuts, all you have to do is replace that coconut cream or coconut milk with um, freshly extracted coconut juice. So you scrape the coconut and that coconut flesh, I what we used to do is blitz it in a food processor with a little bit of water, depending on how thick or how thin you want it. And once that's ground, you literally, uh, you can put it in a muslin cloth and squeeze all that extract out of it. That first extract, which we then pass through a sieve and then use, that's your thick extract or the equivalent of a coconut cream. And you can repeat the process with the same coconut again. This time, the second time around, you just tend to get a slightly thinner extract and that's your um, coconut milk. Just excuse me, I've got my husband helping out with the comments here. I'm just going to see, he seems to be waving frantically. Yes. Okay, I believe I've missed a question. So Savio says, I prepare pera in a non-stick handi since two years. Is it advisable to prepare it in a handi or in a wok shape pan or kadai? Uh, honestly, there's no preference. I used to use those typical handis back in India. It's just that over here, I didn't have access to really good quality handis and this is what I found. I wasn't going to go and buy a specific vessel just to make the sweets. And it turns out to my advantage that that KitchenAid pan was the answer to my prayers. So Savio, I wouldn't really go out of my way and replace the handi. If you've got a handi that works well for you, just go ahead and continue using it. Is there a difference between coconut cream and coconut milk? Yes, coconut cream is just your first extract or your thicker rose, what is called in Konkani, and your coconut milk is just the watered down or a thinner version, that's all. So every time you see coconut cream, coconut milk, just use your coconut extract if you don't have access to the cans. Thank you, Shivani, that's very kind of you to say. That's one way I try and stay connected with my roots in Goa as well. I can't go there as often as I would like. We try, but food is the biggest connecting factor, I think, that takes us back there. Okay, we're going to move on to our next. Uh, oh, I think we're more than halfway done. The next suite that I want to talk about is uh, Kalkals. I had a few questions about how to get your kalkals crispy. Now the most, I think the biggest factor in getting your kalkals crispy is not having your heat too high. So you heat your oil up, bring it to temperature. You can't start off with oil that's not hot enough, but once it has reached that temperature, it's very important to maintain that temperature and cook those kalkals on a low, low, medium, low heat as far as possible. You want to cook them out a little slower, you're just not looking for the outside to be brown. Kalkals tend to get soft when they've been cooked too fast. One of the reasons is they cook too fast, so the outside browns. You don't want it to get too dark brown, so you tend to take it out of the pan, but the insides aren't cooked to the level that they need to, which is why they tend to stay soft on the inside. So try dropping the heat level um, under your, uh, your deep fryer a little, and that should help. Now, I had another question about how to tell whether you've got your heat on a medium low. Every cooktop is different, every knob is different, so there's no easy way for me to answer this. All I'll say is the lowest temperature that your, uh, the, cooktop, the knob on your cooktop goes to, that's your low, mid-level is medium, and all the way up the top is high. Aim for somewhere between an extremely low and a medium heat level, and you should be good to go. That being said, as you progress with frying your batches, especially when you're deep frying sweets, oil, if you're using a if you're using a nice heavy karai or deep fryer or vessel, the vessel tends to retain some amount of heat. So you may find, even though you've got your heat on a medium low, that oil is still too hot. And that's perfectly fine. It's perfectly normal. Just turn it down a little bit and maintain the heat level in there. I hope that helps you getting better results with your kalkals. Hi, Mary. 
Where are you now based? We are in Sydney. And no, Mary, I don't put any color in my dos. Okay, another question about the pan. Um, I will leave a link to a similar pan. Like I mentioned, that particular pan isn't on the market anymore. It's an old pan, but I will leave a link to something very similar. And um, once this live stream is over, I'll, I'll make sure that the video hangs around. So you, if you've missed the part earlier on where I've spoken in detail about the pan, you can go back and watch it when we're done. Hi, Annie. The donut recipe, is this, uh, are these just the regular donuts that you're talking about that you get in places like Madova Donuts or bakeries? When you say not the bakery one, what kind of donuts are you talking about? While I wait for you to answer, I'll just move on to the next question. Okay, before we move on from Kalkals, now, we have always found, at least the recipe that I use, I've always found, even when my mom used to fry them, that there is a slight amount of frothing in your pan when you're deep frying them. To me, that's completely normal. And uh, I've been given to understand that it's usually the egg in that dough that causes the frothing. Some people say it's the coconut milk. I personally don't know for 100%. What we've always done is, if it's possible, use a large karai or a deep fryer and fry your kalkals off in smaller batches. Mary, uh, you made the dough so it didn't come in a good color. Was it too dark or was it too light? When you say it did not achieve a good color, how did it turn out? If you'd like, you could leave me a uh, post a picture to uh, the group on Facebook. There is a group, guys, for those of you who don't know, called the Aspiring Home Cook Group. Um, you can post your picture there, and we could probably then troubleshoot and see what how it can be done better. It was light. I think ultimately it just depends on the coconut you're using, how much coconut, and the chana dal that you're using. There's basically nothing else in there that couldn't contribute. Uh, did you cut down on the amount of sugar in the recipe? Because sometimes when you drop the sugar levels, sugar caramelizes in a certain way, depending on the recipe it's being used in. So sometimes that might be a reason that impacts the color of the outcome. Okay, while I wait for you to reply, Mary, I'm just going to continue because I know a lot of you have taken time out of your busy schedules to be here with me. Thank you so much again for joining me. Okay, uh, if you can, if it's not too much trouble, just leave me a picture on the group and uh, I'll take a look at it and we'll see if there's some way that we can get that better. But no, I did not use any color whatsoever for the chanados. the crispy donut, which doesn't have yeast in it. I think you're talking about the little donut shaped, almost biscuit kind of things that you find in shops. I'll keep that in mind and add that to my list. Renzi, is mazepan also to be done in a smaller batch or is it only milk cream? Now for mazepan, the color doesn't really vary too much. So you can do a double or even a triple batch, but be warned, the bigger your batch, the longer it's going to take for you to cook. So if you have the stamina to stand there for a much longer period of time and stir that for a lot longer, then you can definitely double the batch. I have done a double and even a triple batch. However, if it's your first time doing it, I would recommend starting with like a single batch, like the proportions that I've left in the recipe. That way you just know how and what to expect when you're making your mazapan. The second time around, if you find if you found the first attempt smooth and easy, you can definitely increase the quantity. Um, I have successfully done it in the past. Okay, fantastic, Annie. I'm going to add that to my list and I'll share that as and when I work out a good recipe. Okay, Renzi, I hope that answers your question about the mazapan. 
just go by what you're comfortable with. If you've got time to spare and you've got the stamina to stir, you can definitely double or triple the batch as well. And it shouldn't be a problem. Just use a nice large vessel where you've got that space for it to cook through fast. Okay. All right. Quantities. Lots of folks want to know quantities. I, as far as possible, I try and mention the quantities of ingredients in all of my videos while I'm making whatever it is that I'm making. But it could happen that at times I've forgotten. I know that I think for my um, chocolate hazelnut fudge, I had forgotten. So I added a little snippet in text on the video. But rest assured, almost always I will have a link to the recipe that's on my website. And I'll leave that link in the description box below every single video. Now, if you click on that link, it'll take you to the recipe, that particular recipe page on the website. And that will have a complete list of all of the ingredients, step-by-step -step instructions, and all of that to help you make that recipe for yourself as well. So I hope that helps. To make it easier for those of you who are fairly new to the channel, after we're done with this video, I'll leave a link, one, to the playlist, my Christmas Kuswar playlist, as well as the individual Christmas sweet recipes in the description box of this particular video so that it's easier for you to find. While we're talking about recipes, a lot of, I had a few of you that wanted to know if I have any quick, no bake, no cook recipes. Trust me, those are the kind of ones that I like because there are days over here where it reaches 40 degrees and it, you don't want to turn the oven or the gas on. I haven't made too many of them on the channel, but I have some no-bake cookie recipes on the website. Go to www.theaspiringhomecook.com and in that uh, you'll find a recipe index that has categories of all those recipes and you'll find some no-cook recipes there as well. If you're looking at really quick recipes, you can't go wrong with a chocolate fudge. That's one of the easiest and quickest recipes personally that I've found. Also on my channel, look up almond, I think I've called them almond rocks. They're basically almonds coated in chocolate that make a great addition to your Christmas plateau. While we're talking about chocolate, if there's any interest, if any of you would like to know how to make um, assorted chocolates, leave me a comment, let me know. And uh, once Christmas is over with, I will probably look at putting together a series or maybe one comprehensive video on making chocolates, assorted chocolates at home. Okay. Thank you, Eunice. Savio says, tried making milk cream, but the batter is a bit soft, maybe due to cashew leaving the oil later. How can it be rectified? The best way to fix your milk cream is adding a little bit of icing sugar. If it's really soft and doesn't seem like it's going to come together at all, put it back on the stove and continue cooking it down. Again, watch my video for that cold water test and you should be able to get great results every single time. But for the one batch that's already made and it's already soft, add in a little icing sugar, say a tablespoon or two at a time. Yes, your milk cream will get a little on the sweeter side, but let's face it, it's Christmas. Your milk cream is a sweet, you're expecting it to be sweet and you're not going to eat them by the bowl full. You'll just probably eat a couple of pieces. So if it's a little sweeter, I personally don't see the harm in it at least it'll save on wasting a whole batch of milk cream. So Sabi Menezes, I hope that answers your question. As far as the cashew leaving oil in it later, as long as you're using relatively fresh cashew nuts, I don't see how that will be a problem. Mary, which is the recipe that you could not find? Thank you, Renzi. Okay, we're almost at the end. I just have one or two quick questions to answer. So for those of you who've joined me today, if you've got any other questions that I've not yet answered, go ahead and leave that as a comment and I'll try and address them towards the end.
I've had a couple of viewers message me asking me for time-saving tips. Everyone's in a big rush as well as really busy around Christmas time. A lot of you are working as well as running a home. Some of you might also be running businesses. You've got your own set of challenges. Your best bet would be plan. Like Savio said, he's planning his Christmas and his approach to Christmas. This is the ideal time to get started. Plan out the number of sweets you're going to make, and then you can arrange them. The ones with longer shelf life, make them a little earlier on. The ones with a slightly shorter shelf life, leave them for later. Also, try and get your shopping done at one go. Once you know what you're looking to make, you know the quantities you need, go ahead, purchase them all so that you don't have to run and duck into the shops every time you need to make a new recipe. It also helps to have a little bit of a buffer. So if something calls for half a kilo of a particular ingredient, and you know you're going to use that ingredient for a number of other recipes, just get a little extra just in case. A few other tricks that I find help me as well is I know that over the next couple of days, I'm going to be making a bunch of sweets. And all of these sweets, at least some of them, require powdered sugar. So things that will save you time is even though you might not be baking your cake just then, you know you're going to bake it in a few days, go ahead, powder that sugar and keep it aside. Set it in a jar. Nothing will happen to it. You'll have it ready and that'll be one less thing to do while you're making those recipes. And you won't have to do that time and again, wash that mixer jar time and again every time you sit to make that particular, the recipes that you've chosen to make. The same thing applies to things like cardamom powder. A lot of our Goan sweets use cardamom powder. If you're using it for just one recipe, then maybe a mortar and pestle or a little grinding stone is your best bet. But if you know you're going to need it for a bunch of recipes, grind them in your dry grinder, keep them in an airtight glass jar, and it should be good to go for when you're using your, um, when you need to use it for making your Christmas sweets. Mm. Savio says, for Oreo truffles, can we use gel color on top instead of yellow cream? Um, the truffles, I what I've done is I've coated them in a dark chocolate. And I use something that we get over here that are called candy melts. So they're basically, if you don't have access to candy melts, you can either use white chocolate to drizzle on top. Or you can use uh, white chocolate that's been tinted with candy colors. That's one option. You can also use uh, a royal icing to color it on top. Now, if you get gel, uh, I think some, some shops will carry gel um, icing tubes. If that's what you're talking about, you can. But just... A heads up that that gel icing, I, I personally not used it, but I don't believe that hardens. So that might still stay soft on the top. So if you're just serving it straight away, you're putting it on a plate, serving it up to friends, family, taking it to work, any other icing will work as well. Or just switch it up. If you're coating the truffles in dark chocolate, drizzle a little white on top. You can also just drizzle, sprinkle a few. Um, you get these little sprinkles for cake and cupcake decoration. You can sprinkle some of that on top, sorry, on top while the chocolate is still warm. Just after you've dipped the truffles, you can top it up with a, a few crushed or chopped nuts. Those are a few options that you have to top those truffles as well. I hope that answers your question. Uh, do you have a recipe for Christmas plum cake? I've got a few of them. Um, I haven't made my cake this year. I've left it for too long because of our weather conditions. But I am going to do my best to get that up. I know I think I've said that for a few things so far. I'm going to try and do my best to get at least one plum cake recipe up before Christmas. But please forgive me if I don't get it up in time because I have a whole bunch of things that I do other than the YouTube channel. I will try and work that in. That's a promise. Okay, I think that's that's about it for me. Um, 
A few questions have come through about the chocolate that I use and the vanilla that I use. Now, again, use whatever is accessible to you locally. In Bombay, I used to use one of these imported brands of chocolate called Alst, A-A-L-S-T. Mm, those, however, you only get in slightly larger quantities. I believe you used to get them in two, two and a half kilo bars, really massive bars. But because I used to make things commercially, I used to work through those bars of chocolate. Um, that being said, whatever is available to you locally, make it work. You will get some sort of a result or the other. With chocolate, the better the quality of chocolate, the better your resulting fudge or your truffle or whatever else will be it directly affects the taste. So just do a little, maybe do a Google search, look on Amazon, check and see some really great brands of chocolate that are available globally. One is Calibut. The other is, uh, I believe, uh, Valrona chocolate. So these are a few. I use a local variety that we get. It's, um, what's it called? It's called Chocchio. I'll see if I can find um, links of some sort. This Chokya brand is not, it's it's basically one of these home brands from our local, one of our local um, grocery shop chains. So I won't be able to find a link to that. But again, whatever is available locally can be used. I have used it in the past and there should be no problem using what you can find. Vanilla. Vanilla, you get vanilla extract, vanilla essence and a vanilla bean paste and the vanilla bean in itself. I have used vanilla essence for many, many years because basically that was all that was available. However, I have now moved to vanilla extract and bean paste. Basically, your essence is a synthetic product. It's not natural. There's nothing from the actual vanilla bean in it at all. But it does the job. It flavors your cakes. I've used it for years. And if that's all you have access to, go ahead and use it. Again, you're using just a tiny bit in a larger assortment of ingredients. So it works well. A vanilla extract is more widely available than a vanilla bean paste. So just go ahead, play with it. I have a recipe for a good vanilla extract that you can make at home if you've got access to vanilla beans. And um, I've got that on my list of recipes to share with you as well. I'm going to try and put that up soon so that those of you who don't have access to the bean paste, you can at least go ahead and make yourself a nice good batch of um, vanilla extract and use that in your cooking. Wedding plum cake. Yes, plum cake seems to be really high on that list, as is ginger wine. I'm going to try my level best to, to share at least one plum cake recipe before Christmas. Again, uh, I've got a few things going on at the moment, so I'm, I'm really going to try my hardest. If I can't get it done before Christmas, I will definitely do it in the weeks that follow. So that's it from me. Thank you for sharing 45 minutes of your time. I know everyone's really busy and you've taken the time to, to join in and listen to me go on, which I have done for a while. I know I get a few comments saying I'm too chatty and my videos are too long. I talk a lot, but hey, that's my nature. I've always been a chatterbox. So I'm sorry to those of you who think that I tend to go on and on. I think I'm doing that again, but while I may try and cut that down, I can't promise whether that will happen. So you're stuck with the chatty old me. All right, so I won't keep you any longer than this, I've, I think I've covered all of the questions that have come through on the community tab. As always, I'm always here for you. If you have questions, leave them as a comment to the video. A lot of times I get questions asking me about details that have already been shared in the video. So make sure you watch, you watch the video entirely from end to end, that information, or uh, almost all of the relevant information, everything that I know, about a recipe I share with you. So go ahead and watch the video and you'll be able to, you will have quicker access to that information rather than waiting for you to, waiting for me to reply to your comments. I try my hardest to reply to every single one. 
I definitely read every single one of your recipes and I'm absolutely humbled by the love and the support that you show me. Thank you so much because without your encouragement, I don't think my channel would have been where it is today. Um, go ahead, share the love, share the recipes. The more people that can make these recipes and enjoy the sweets, the happier I am and the happier they will be too. So don't hesitate to share these recipes with others that might need it. All right. I'll take your leave now. Thank you so much. I wish you and your families a very Merry Christmas, a blessed holiday season, and a fantastic new year. I am going to continue sharing recipes, so you'll see me again really soon. Thank you again for joining me today. Bye-bye. Take care, and God bless.